Why, hello. Um, tell us about those, those. Yeah. Okay. I hear a visitor. So last night we had a bit of a squall, it was a bit hairy, the wind generator nearly came down. I managed to use a ratchet fastener for luggage and hook it up and I managed to save it. Almost pulled off the back of the push pit, I must say Ricky got quite scared last night. Uh, also in all that storm and shenanigans, a uh, very sad thing happened. Everybody has seen one of these break. And that will be my day's project to put a new cord on and also service the generator. And I'll take you along for the journey. So this is our little mean machine. This is a Westinghouse iGen 2200 and it is 2200. It has been with us for quite a while. It lives on the bow of the boat been battered it's the second time the pull cord has now snapped okay now that I have the cowling off and the fuel tank I've drained the fuel back into this jug here I'm going to pull the carburetor off and I will just give it a quick squirt with the carb cleaner make sure everything's working nicely in there I will inspect the air filter of course and then I will spray some carb cleaner through that fuel filter, make sure it's all 100%. I'll also use some carb cleaner just to clean out that fuel tank. Uh, yeah, otherwise everything is looking sharp here. And you'll see this is where the pull cord goes in. So I have to remove these sockets here around. It's just in a plastic cover, so it's not too tight in there and then I'll have to feed it through that and back through that cowling. They have gone to go fetch me some nice line to build a replacement for that. So it's gonna look sharp. But the bigger the mouth, the longer the handle, and that handle's not gonna fit for the next size up, so. Okay, after removing the air box, which is consists of one bolt and one bolt on the inside of the air filter. So you have to pull the air filter out and then there was a bolt that goes at the back there. It goes into the back of this cowling, which actually makes now getting into here a lot easier. You can see from the last time I worked here, I, did, I didn't put that bolt in or that other bolt. So yeah, it's not that much of a problem. So I've got Aubrey going to go get some carb cleaner at water zone or something like that and you can see the float switch moving nicely yeah so I'm just gonna spray through those jets with some carb cleaner clean that out nicely put it back together otherwise I will be removing the spark plug it's giving me a lot more trouble than anticipated feeler gauge that I can gap the new spark plug which is somewhere hiding inside this area so Aubrey came back Use the carb cleaner, I spread it through the jets, spread it through the main body. Uh, it seems to be all nice and clean and then I tightened it back up, tightened the bowl back on. Uh, but before I go any further, I'm going to remove the cover for the pull cord and tackle that. Unfortunately, I had to remove the front fascia now, so there's a few quick disconnects. Okay, so here's the spring-loaded starter, pull start. So the rope would run around that edge there and there will be a stop and knot on the opposite side which will be there. Uh, so I pulled it through, you can see it came to its end. So I'm just going to cut a piece of the new lazy jack lines because that looks nice and strong and should be able to stand up to the task. I made the hole a little bit larger and fit it through here. So now I'm going to have to remove this part of the body and retention the spring. New line is on. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, so putting the cowling back on. Uh, one thing 
that I need to adjust now. So this is the pull cord handle. That hole there is too fine for the rope that I have here. So I'm just going to run a drill bit through here and then I'll be able to use the existing pull handle. Okay, new pull cord attached. I know it's not retracting all the way, but I'm happy with that. Okay, connected up, working perfectly again. I hit everything with T9 to create some rust and corrosion protection along the fascia. Time to go charge some batteries. Conventional reefing. In a mainsail, pairs of grommets called reefing tacks, reefing clues, or reefing cringles may be installed in the sail. A cruising boat typically has two to three pairs. Pulling these points down to the bottom forms a new tack and clue, reducing the sail's area and slowing the boat down. Little Miss has two reefing points. Are you stop or not in there? Uh, you could do a stop or not. It's probably pulling sideways on it. It's not pulling out, so that's all good. You could do a big stopper knot on it. That stays out of your way better. Remember, these are going to be loose most of the time. Okay. Okay, so they're not really in your way much. Okay. Uh, stopper knot would work, or is that aluminum? Yeah. Yeah, stopper knot. That takes care of both those pad eyes spots, and both blocks will hook to that. That's not being used for anything else, right? No. That you're aware of? No. Okay. Perfect. It's just got simpler. Oh, yeah, that's there was two. That's, yeah. that's that one. Put that through there, and that will change the angle by 90 degrees. Okay. Which is about what we need. And most would tell you to wire, safety wire that, but I seriously don't think, and, and never use your wire dice to do that. What is slab reefing? It's a reefing system. The most common choice for modern yachts is slab reefing, in which there are typically three reefs that are progressively pulled down to shorten the sail as the wind increases. Okay. Along with the other one for our second reef. So do we have any more hardware to affix to this guy here? Yes. Okay. Yes. Back. Yeah, we should have yep, right here. Okay. Those for and one. Am I going to pop rivet that in? Those are going to be pop riveted for the rest of So how much? Okay, so we're gonna cut the line for the first reef right now. Yeah. Oh, it's good. It's Okay, yeah, I don't like that. So let's do, let's go with that, yeah. Okay. I've never installed these before. Oh, well, right there. oh through there. Yeah. It's a pivot point. That's where all the strength needs to be. Right? Pull it in. It opens as you pull it in, and then when you let go, it clamps down. Mm -hmm. All right, and this goes that way. And then you're going to reach forward, and you're going to have to be able to pull that out, pop it straight up, and yeah, go toward you and up a little bit of anything. Yep. Yeah. How's that for yep. spacing? Perfect. Okay. Probably do like now. Actually, you want these Can't pointed me. towards that. A common saying about reefing is that if you think you need to reef, you should have already reefed. Reef early, reef often, reef deep. I know you've heard it a thousand times, but here's for a thousand and one. reef out here, second reef, and halyard. Okay. You want your halyard to be kind of the straightest. Okay. It's going to be here. Somewhere in That's there. That's okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, actually, before you... All right, you ready? Can you lower the... Yeah. Yeah, lower. Lower the main? Lower the main. Up there.
operation, changing the seals on the Raritan PHRK2 toilet. And uh, unfortunately, Aubrey is not going to be here for this. She is a little bit against this sort of stuff, so I'm going to help her out with this. And she's going to owe me a bottle of whiskey. And she better stay by that, otherwise I will put it back together with all the dirty stuff. And so first things, I'm going to have to go close off the seacocks. And then I will start removing the parts and I will take you along the journey. It might not be a pleasant one, but it sure as well be a stinky one. So first things first, we will start by disconnecting the bowl. So there were two quick releases there, and this is the water that pumps from outside that will flush the system. <laughs> Removing these four bolts and their retaining plastic pieces, and there was a nut that goes on top there. Uh, we should be able to remove the bowl now, and then there should be access to the first seal over here. Okay, after the bowl has been removed, you can see this seal is looking a little bit old and disgusting. Don't worry guys, I will be taking all of this out and cleaning it properly. Okay, now I disconnected these bolts that were holding the flange for the waste exit. And it does have the seal and the joker valve within the seal there. Next step will be to remove the base bolts. There's one, two, and a third one back there, but that is about it. There's supposed to be one, two, three, four, five, six holding it in, but whoever installed this got a bit lazy. Okay, now after removing those bolts, uh, this one that was screwed in at an angle there, so it's not great, but there is wood over here. Uh, we will probably figure something out here to seal this up a lot better. Um, however, it shouldn't be leaking like this in the first place. And this was the water inlet that was plugged in here. It was just two hose cams, I pulled that out. And now, quite easily, you can pick up the unit. I'm going to take this outside and give it a very good clean before I even start cleaning and working on the seals. Uh, okay, so now just spraying it down with this uh, simple green, eco friendly, biodegradable, whatever, whatever. Uh, just spray that on and then I can just use the, the deck spray, deck wash down hose. I can give it a fairly good clean just to start off with. After about two minutes of cleaning, you can say it's looking a lot more environmentally friendly and it looks like something now I can work on. Um, I must say if we get about, what should I say, about 5,000 likes, I will remove the whole toilet, every part of it, and I will paint it pink for the pride of Little Miss. Okay, so this is all the components that come from the pump assembly and we have seals in this kit to replace every single one of those, including those bowl, bowl seals, sorry. And you can see that this is all apart. I will then just give this another bit of cleaning and then I will put it together. I must say, all in right now, I have about 10 minutes into the project. And it could have gone quicker if I actually knew what I was doing, but this is like trial and error for me. Okay, now I've laid it out as I took it out, and I've cleaned them all. I have now all my replacement parts here, 
and I will just assemble it as I took it apart. Uh, as you can see there is uh, assembly lube there. Uh, it's mostly for this unit over here which is the part that swivels for flush and for empty, I think dry, yeah. So that needs a good seal on there but I'll also be putting it on this main plunger part that goes up and down. Okay, all clean, all the seals put back in, reassembled. However, I was missing one of the seals uh, for this part over here, which controls the pump, well, is the seal for the pump. And however, I did manage to find some O-rings from my scuba equipment that I was able to put in there. However, I don't think that's a long-term solution and it will persist to leak from this point. But it's nothing more I can do right now. But I do know what I need for this part and it's quite easy to replace that. I'll be removing this cotter pin and then you slide this up and you can pull this part out without removing this part. Awesome. So I'm going to re-plumb everything. Bolt it back down a little bit nicer and we should have a working toilet. Okay. So it's installed, remember to always do it on the opposite sides. I have also connected the elbow here and also this is where the joker valve goes in and it then is clamped in and acts also as the main seal. So now I just need to put this seal over here and then toilet can go on and then I am going to christen it. That is it. Job done. I say this is about a two hour job if you like doing a lot of cleaning as well. Um, I'm pretty sure if you just needed to change seals you could do this and smack it out in a good hour. So the next thing for me to do is open the seacocks and then see if anything leaks and just see if I need to tighten down any of these hose clamps. Well, that's it for today.